so what we have now is what we call second generation BTK inhibitors. So one of the important things about BTK inhibitors is that they have what we call an on-target effect, but they have off-target effect. So on-target effect is what is desired for multiple sclerosis, which will be modulation of the B cells, right, in preventing their activation, and also perhaps the effect on microglia, which we'll talk about a little bit. That's another promise of those molecules, and we're kind of uh, trying to see if that's going to really hold and, and work. But there are off-target effects. Some of those are bleeding. You know, they can affect plate. So they can affect certain other tissues where we really don't want them to affect in our patients. This is why we have the second generation uh, BTK inhibitors that we're testing in multiple sclerosis because they have less of this off-target effects. So compared to some of the earlier BTK inhibitors that were tested in oncology and other other fields. Um, so when I think about the BTK inhibitors. I think about their effect in a way in the peripheral uh, immune, in, in peripheral in blood, but also within the brain. And that's where um, many of them are CNS penetrant. So they actually get into the central nervous system. Some of them, we call them covalent, some of them reversible. So that means they kind of bind to the enzyme if they're covalent and then permanent binding and, and, and activation. And then, and then if they are um, reversible, then there's some you know, on and off binding. Um, so we don't know which is going to really be more favorable in, in the studies. We're excited to see the results of those phase three trials that testing various BTK inhibitors. But when I think about them, I'm very interested in their effect within the central nervous system. Because one of the things that are missing in multiple sclerosis treatment is the treatment of progressive multiple sclerosis, right? So we have several agents that work beautifully. They work very effectively in relapsing MS. So relapsing forms of MS are under good control. Progressive forms of MS, whether it's primary progressive MS or secondary progressive MS, there's not as much of a, of a good beneficial response that we see in clinical practice um, of any of the agents that are available. I would say, you know, we have one agent uh, that is approved for primary progressive MS, but, you know, still we need more, right? And, and when we think about progressive MS, we are thinking about what's happening within the central nervous system what's happening, what's driving this neurodegenerative process? Is it inflammatory process driving neurodegeneration? Is it independent? Is it both? So we know that there are, you know, stories for both sides, you know, could be driven by inflammation, could be independently from inflammation driven neurodegeneration and neurotoxicity. So our hope is some of those BTK inhibitors may actually be able to hit their target in progressive MS and also hit their target in relapsing MS. And then if we have you know, molecules that are able to really effectively halt or reduce relapses and reduce MRI activity in relapsing MS, but also reduce progression in progressive MS, then we actually are closer to where we want to be in MS therapeutic landscape. So the effect on microglia is of interest. The cell is, 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 is dual you know, uh, function. Um, it can be sometimes you know, pro-inflammatory, but can also be anti-inflammatory and kind of, kind of help um, you know, clean up the inflammatory milieu and kind of make sure that things are going well in this internal system. This is why targeting the cell is also important. So targeting innate and adaptive immune system is of great interest without depleting the cells, right? The other, the other thing that people talk about in BTK inhibitor, well, we're not depleting the B cells, we're not killing them, right? So we're, we're preventing their activation, we're modulating their effect maybe, and then we're also modulating maybe microglia effect. So that's still all theoretical. Um, we are waiting for the clinical trial results. Uh, we wanna see the safety and we want to see the efficacy in both relapsing forms of MS, but also progressive forms of multiple sclerosis.